Howdy friends, my name is Savannah and today we're going to read Don't Eat the Blue Bonnets, written by Ellen Leventhal and Ellen Rothberg, illustrated by Bill Meganhart. For a cow, Sue Ellen had a mind of her own. When the cow, other cows mooed, Sue Ellen whistled. When Max the Longhorn gave an order, all the cows snapped to attention, except Sue Ellen. She just swished her tail, batted her lashes, and smelled the daisies. Every spring, Max puts up a sign in Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean's favorite pasture. Humph, said Sue Ellen. Max is not the boss of me. He can't tell me what to do. With that, she hooked tails with Lisa Jean and they sashayed across the field. I can eat the blue bonnets if I want to, she snorted. The blue bonnets won't come back next spring if you eat them, Lisa Jean warned. But we eat grass and it comes back, Sue Ellen argued. That's true, Lisa Jean replied. But blue bonnets are different. They won't come back. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen wasn't totally convinced. The next day, when Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean arrived at the south pasture, the blue bonnets were just starting to pop up. Sue Ellen's mouth watered. Don't forget, we're not supposed to eat the blue bonnets, Lisa Jean reminded her. I'm not eating them. I'm just looking at them, Sue Ellen said, licking her lips. As they stood behind the pond, Sue Ellen stuck her nose in the air and took a deep breath. Don't the blue bonnet smell yummy? Don't eat the blue bonnets, Lisa Jean reminded her. Sue Ellen licked her lips again. I'm not eating them. I'm just smelling them. She swished her tail. Water comes back to the pond every year, doesn't it? She muttered. Later, Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean were grazing in the shade of a big oak tree. Sue Ellen noticed one small, perfect blue bonnet. It looked delicious. Her mouth watered. Don't eat the blue bonnets, Lisa Jean reminded her. Sue Ellen stuck her tongue out and licked the perfect flower. I'm not eating it. I'm just licking it. She looked up at the trees and swished her tail. The leaves on the trees come back every year, don't they? She said. So do the birds, said Sue Ellen, as they watched the mockingbirds teach their babies to fly. I guess they do, Lisa Jean said, as she watched each baby leave the nest and return safely. By the end of the week, the blue bonnets covered the pasture and Sue Ellen couldn't stop thinking about them. She'd imagined how the petals would taste sliding down her throat. Sue Ellen thought about the water in the pond. She remembered the leaves coming back every spring and she watched the birds fly by. And with that, she charged into the south pasture and ate every single blue bonnet. <sighs> Sue Ellen was so full she had to lie under the big oak tree and take a nap. When Sue Ellen opened her eyes, Max was standing over her. Humph, Mac complained Max. Somebody ate all the blue bonnets. So what? They'll just grow back next year. Sometimes nature needs some help, Max mumbled. We'll just wait and see, yawned Sue Ellen. Oh, so they waited. Spring faded, summer went by, and in the fall, the leaves fell. The winter chill blew in from the north. Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean thought spring would never come. Then the days began to grow longer and the snow started to melt. When the grass grew so tall that it tickled their bellies, they knew it was time to head to the south pasture where the blue bonnets grew. When they reached the pasture that morning, they saw Max carrying his sign. Well, Sue Ellen, well, Sue Ellen 
I guess we won't be needing this sign since the blue bonnets haven't grown back, Max bellowed. All the cows glared at Sue Ellen. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. If the blue bonnets won't come back, she thought, I'll bring them back myself. And with that, she switched her tail and headed to the north pasture to gather some of the blue bonnets growing there. Blue bonnets are blue bonnets, she said. I'll just move the blue bonnets from the north pasture to the south pasture. By midday, the blue bonnets had wilted. They were so flat that even the bees couldn't find the pollen in them. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. Blue bonnets are blue bonnets. I'll just paint them on the hay, she thought as she grabbed her paints. Sue Ellen finished painting the last bale of hay. She glanced up and exclaimed in shock. Well, that wasn't going to work for long. Having a mind of her own, Susan Llewellyn didn't give up. She took her paints, scissors, construction paper, and glue and headed to the south pasture. By the end of the day, the field was alive with paper blue bonnets that Sue Ellen had made herself. That night, a Texas-sized thunderstorm woke Sue Ellen up. Lightning lit up the sky. The thunder boomed and the rain soaked the ground. When Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean got to the pasture the next morning, the paper blue bonnets had blown away. I guess only real bonnet, the blue bonnets are the blue of the sky, and only real blue bonnets would have, would have that wonderful smell, and only real blue bonnets are worth licking, she sighed. So having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. That night, she went to the south pasture and planted a packet of Max's seeds she had found in the barn. When the next spring came, Sue Ellen took out her paints and freshened up Max's sign. Max, she said, batting her lashes, will you please put the sign up again? He laughed. Ha ha, there's no need. The blue bonnets won't be back. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. She took the sign, planted it firmly in the ground where Max had put it before. It wasn't long before their favorite pasture was beautiful again. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided she could look at the blue bonnets, smell the blue bonnets, and lick the blue bonnets. But she could not eat the blue bonnets. The end. And that was the story of Don't Eat the Blue Bonnets. I hope you liked it. Keep watching for an exciting activity to do next. Or until next time, see y'all later and happy reading. Howdy friends, so glad you're here. We're going to be making a blue bonnet today. It's a native flower to Texas. And you might have seen flowers like this in the book. So for this craft, you're going to need three green pipe cleaners about four blue pipe cleaners, at least five white cotton balls, and I'm using E6000 glue today. You probably want to use some Elmer's glue or something like that, especially if you're doing it with littles. You're also going to want a long wooden rod or a number two pencil, something that you can wrap the pipe cleaners around. So we're going to start by braiding our three green pipe cleaners together to make the stem of the flower. So we're going to twist off the top. And then you're going to take these stems and you're going to put them in a simple braid. So once you have your stem mostly braided, then what you're going to do is you're going to secure the end and just kind of fold it over the back here, like so. All right, now that you have your stem, you can go ahead and set this off to the side. What you're going to do is you're then going to pick up the rod, take one of your blue pipe cleaners, and you're actually going to pick the stem back up. You're going to hold it here, and you take your pipe cleaner and you're going to wrap it around the stem of the flower. And you're just going to make a little loop. 
around each side like so. Once you've finished wrapping the pipe flanger, you're going to slide the wooden stem out and push all of the blue pipe cleaner kind of up to the top. Make sure it stays a little spread out, that way your flower has some depth to it. So now your flower should look like this. And we're gonna repeat the process about two to three times with the rest of our blue pipe cleaners. blue bonnet looks like this. We're going to take our last pipe cleaner and we're going to tie it around. Then take each end of the blue pipe cleaner and fold it over to create the edges of the flower. stem up here. Set my glue off to the side. And now I can take each of these little cotton balls and we're just going to place them right on the top of the flower. officially have a blue bonnet.